More than 5,000 people killed in Gaza. Nearly 1,400 people have died in Israel. We want to welcome in former State Department Chief of Staff Bill Smolin to speak more with us on the topic. Bill, joining us live in the studio tonight. Thanks for being here with us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Jeff. Again. Pleasure. Um, so let's start here. We're now into week three. Um, we've been hearing about a possible ground incursion. When could that happen and how much of a factor are these release very slow release of hostages going to play into that i think in terms of the hostages it's a case of delay and deceive mm -hmm. on the part of hamas but uh, the challenge to israel there are three as i see it <clears throat> first of all getting humanitarian aid mm -hmm. in at the southern border from egypt very important very critical and the need is immense mm -hmm. secondly they've got a front on the north with lebanon hezbollah yeah. Yeah. which is a stronger force than hamas and they've got to be careful of that otherwise they're going to be fighting a two-front war mm -hmm. and the third thing they have to worry about of course is the release of the hostages so uh, I think that they have already begun to try to find out where they might be. Mm -hmm. And typically what happens is you have intelligence that goes in first okay. to try to locate them. You have special operations forces that will indeed go in and get them if they know where they are. And then third, you've got to have to have medical support in case any of them are uh, killed or, or wounded. So it's a, a three-front attack on the part of special operations. A, a lot to handle, certainly. I'm, I'm very interested because we haven't heard a lot about this possibility of a, of a two-front war, but Hezbollah is, is sitting there very close. They've already thrown a few punches, each of them. How, how much of a worry is that for Israel? I think it's a big worry. Yeah. First of all, fighting a two-front war is very distracting, and you, you get all of your forces massed, mm -hmm. by and large, uh, on Gaza right now. And there are hundreds of thousands of men and women soldiers who are ready to move. You can't keep them there forever. So Israel has a serious challenge on their hands. Yeah, history has been <laughs> proven a lot about that over many, many years. Um, okay, let's talk about the U.S. now. Uh, sending aid, uh, the positioning assets like uh, USS Gerald Ford, I believe. The president's obviously, we know, made a visit. Uh, what kind of delicate balance is the U.S. Oh, God, walking God. right now with this conflict? It's a very serious balance because we have a reputation at stake we have our credibility in the world order at stake and we cannot misfire what we are going to advise and do we've got to stay out of this war this is not our war so you're not going to see American ground troops mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to see American planes fly unless it's a real crisis or a catastrophe but we have got to pay attention to our reputation and go slowly if you look like you're doing too much to serve the Israelis, we're going to have a problem, I right. suspect. Right. Um, you are always the optimist. Um, so I, I want to see where you kind of find a, a silver lining uh, with this. Could there be an opportunity here for some sort of sustained, lasting end to the conflict between Israel uh, and, and Palestine? Well, I am optimistic, and I, I continue to try to be as hopeful as possible so i think first of all if israel proceeds slowly it's uh, yes a crisis but it also presents an opportunity mm -hmm. to do what to find a solution to the two-state solution which we've been talking about for years our first trip at the state department was to israel right. to try to broker right. help broker that back in back in 2001 first trip yeah. overseas secretary powell and mm -hmm. i went to try to do that uh, nothing changed then, and nothing has changed now. But if, if they don't try to broker some kind of an agreement, it may not be a two-state solution, but at least a hopeful solution to live peacefully with one another, then it's not going to be a very good future for either party. Bill Smullen, I always love your insight. You know that. I got you on speed dial because this thing doesn't look like it's uh, resolving anytime <laughs> soon. I'd love to get your thoughts on the next story, but, but that's going to have to wait for the next time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. All right, Jeff. Pleasure.